I was talking to the writer Meredith Bryant about um, beauty stories, which we really like to do since they're, you know, beauty is very relevant to all of our lives. And I challenged her to go Euro. Lucy and I had originally talked about going European just in terms of hair, and which was sort of, you know, the original idea. But then she's like, why don't you just go European with everything, with everything in your beauty regimen? Could someone who is very Americanized in their beauty routine give it all up and sort of adopt a, a more Euro-centric routine? which basically meant, of course, uh, not shaving anymore and um, not shampooing it nearly as much. So I was like, hmm, this is interesting. My college reunion is in two weeks. Um, not really the best timing, but I decided to do it. You know, thought it would be interesting. She is a sort of classically preppy American looking woman with a, a very full and somewhat strict uh, regimen that she follows every morning and every week. When we asked her to do this, she sort of laughed at first, but she really got into it. My first concern was I didn't want to just make blanket assumptions. Americans tend to maybe misperceive European beauty rituals and think that, oh, they just shower less than us, oh, they just don't um, shave their armpits, but that's not necessarily true. Generally speaking, I she seemed, you know, just, just happy to not have to care quite as much. And she looked fine. I mean, she looked terrific. She looked different. But it was nice to just not be quite so vigilant and hung up on those things. It felt so great to get up in the morning and not have to wash my hair and just, you know, spray this stuff in it and, and go out the door. And I put, like, some styling products in. Um, and, you know, my hair looked great, which surprised no one more than myself. She actually, in the end, adopted some of these, some of these tricks that European women um, do on a regular basis. Well, I think that, that European women have something down that American women don't, which is you don't have to be perfect from head to toe. You know, concentrate on your hair or concentrate on your tan or something, but not everything has to look perfect. And, um, you know, there's something to be said about getting out and living your life instead of, you know, preparing yourself for life all the time. <laughs> Marie Claire has always had a very strong relationship with its readers. They're a very strong presence in the magazine and we've always featured them in the magazine. And what I wanted was a way of reflecting the different women who read the magazine. And we decided to set off across the country and really look at the way Americans look now, American women look now. I think this kind of story is really unique to Mary Claire because um, it really, we're one of the few magazines that I think really represents the voice of, the, of our readers and um, it's nice to have that element besides just the celebrities and the models. Um, you know, our, our global voice is definitely represented in the diversity of our readers. So I got my massage over there, my nails done over here, and uh, makeup over here, feeling good. I love that I'm strong and I'm getting fit. I've always been complimented on my hair. I've never done anything to it, and, and I've just been very, very fortunate. I think our readers are looking for empowerment, and um, they, you know, they want to relate to other readers. They want to know that what they're doing is not only right, but that it's an experience that's shared among other women. I love my creativity, my colorfulness, and the way I deal with people. 
When we talked to a lot of the women in New Orleans, a lot of them talked about how important it was to have the rituals of normality to do their hair well or put their makeup on or have their clothes ironed or wear their favorite white shirt because at times of crisis, it made them feel better and it gave them that extra little bit of strength which seemed to us very positive and we wanted to celebrate that. What do I love about myself? I guess I love my full lips and my blue eyes. And what we wanted to do was say to our readers, we know you're interesting. Uh, you may not be opening the next movie at the Cineplex down the road, but we think you're interesting. We want you to be part of the magazine and we want to celebrate you. We have a big uh, package on dating in our October issue. So a lot of times I catch myself being like, let's go out to dinner with my friends and family. And he's like, whoa. Dating is almost a passe term now. Nobody dates in the way that you know one did 20 years ago or 30 years ago.